cut out. Hello, everyone. I'm Anne. I'm Brian. And we are here with you today to get you out of your head and into your body. So today we're actually going to start in a yoga squat. And if you like, and you have a block-like object, you can squat on this block-like object, like so. You can just sit here if you want, or you can take it to a lower level and sit on it, or you can sit on nothing at all. You can sit on your air beneath your uh, glutes. So to show you from the side real quick, this yoga squat is not a hunched over rounded back kind of affair, which I might do if I'm like picking something off of the ground. It's more of an open hearted, elongated spine, tuck tail kind of thing. So you're really feeling your glutes engage here as you find yourself in the squat. That being said, take a deep inhale in your squat here. And exhale. And you might have found at the beginning of that inhale, your pelvic floor, that's right, the area at the bottom of your pants here is opening up on that inhale. So let's try that again, breathing deeply. Now I want you to engage that low lock in the pelvic floor as we sit here still breathing at your own pace. Just Inhale deeply and lift through the pelvic floor like you're literally clenching your asshole. <laughs> There's no nice way to put this, so we'll be honest. So pull up on Mulabanga, that's the pelvic floor, lifting from there. Now try to do a deep inhale. You might find that it was a deep inhale from the belly, but there was a lot of constriction in the pelvic floor because I asked you to close the pelvic floor before inhaling. Now release the pelvic floor if you haven't already, and we'll try that inhale again. The reason why I'm asking you to do these practices one after the other like this is that I want you to cultivate a mindfulness of exactly what your pelvic floor is doing. You might find that the pelvic floor acts as a pump. If you hang out here again, and feel free, of course, to sit on the block if this is really intense to keep hanging out here in the squat. Just try pulsing the pelvic floor, just grabbing that low energy spot and bringing some life into it. So pulling up and releasing, pulling up and releasing, and just see what that feels like. And just breathe naturally as you do this. You might find that energy is kind of moving upwards in the body. What we find when we're really clenched at the pelvic floor is that all of our energy goes up towards our head for better or for worse and gets us stuck in our head. Hi, Robin. Gets us stuck in our head so that we're really just kind of. Uh, that's great. We're starting in a squat. You got it, Mama. Thank you. So there we go, pin that. We're really just finding that when we are feeling really up in our head, sometimes a really nice way to deal with that is again, just keep an eye, a mental eye, on what your pelvic floor is doing. So again, in your squat here, inhale deeply, feeling the pelvic floor open as you inhale, then the belly, then the ribs, then the upper chest, then exhaling, releasing from the upper chest, ribs, belly, and then the pelvic floor naturally comes up on its own. Again, inhaling deeply, almost pushing down on the pelvic floor as you inhale, first to the pelvic floor, belly, ribs, upper chest, then exhaling, upper chest, ribs, belly comes back towards spine, pelvic floor gently lifts. That is a happy pelvic floor. The pelvic floor that is clenched inadvertently because of anxiety. It happens to all of us, or all the energy is holding ourselves up as we get through the day, as we force ourselves to get through something. Who knows what, the work shift, who knows? We'll release that pelvic floor and just ground into the body. So when you're ready, feel free to place your hands on the ground in front of you. 
and we'll bend their knees, lifting the hips, coming into a forward fold. You can toe heel the feet a little bit closer together, and just feel free to hang out here in your forward fold. You can grab her opposite elbows and rock side to side. Resting and relaxing for just a second before we slowly roll all the way up to standing. And when we make it here, we just start bouncing. And I know for yogis that have been watching that uh, I've threatened a half hour only bounce class. And I thought really hard about, well, we're teaching on election day, whether we like it or not. So uh, perhaps, <laughs> well, let's bring in here. Perhaps an all bouncing class would be really great, but I think we'll do a few more things besides just bouncing. So if you're feeling very sluggish today, like you just can't get any energy to do anything and you're feeling very unmotivated, feel free to hop a little bit in place. So just gently hopping in place. Your toes are coming off the ground here. It's very, very light. However, if you feel very up in your head and you absorb too much anxiety from the world around you or from the news or from just life, feel free to spread the legs wide and we'll shake it all into the ground. So either hopping or just bouncing everything down. Really let the bounce be natural. It doesn't need to involve the shoulders as much as coming from the hips here. In fact, if you want to put your hands on your hips, that might give you even more of a sense of where the real movement is coming from. And if you're hopping, at this point, I recommend come into this wide-legged squatting bounce as well. I'll show from the side. My feet are coming out to the sides at like a 45 degree angle, and my knees are actually coming out over my feet here. And I'm just kind of being lazy about it and bouncing. So our feet are set up for some really good stuff besides bouncing for grounding the body. I'm just gonna get a little bit more of this because it's so wonderful. My feet are set up for guru the squats, for squatting. So more grounding things. So when you're ready, bouncing can come to stillness. Feet stay where they are. Knees are straight here. I'm gonna inhale my arms up above my head Looking up towards my hands as my knees bend, exhale, standing back up. And we'll just continue like that, inhaling, sitting down, exhaling, standing. Using your arms like a pump here to really bring fresh oxygen into the body, all the way down the sides of the body, all the way down to your feet. And next time you exhale, just stay down, arms are above our head here. This in itself is a really intense practice, but we're gonna change it up a bit. Feel free to bring the arms out to the side, bring the thumbs into the palms, fingers wrap around the thumbs, and we'll just do a little bit of rotation for the elbows here. So windmills, as we stand strong in our squat, if the squat is getting overwhelming, feel free to straighten both legs. And when you're ready, we'll switch the direction these little windmills are going. Breathing deep, catching your breath if you're talking your head off like me. And then when you're ready, we'll bring those hands same position with the thumbs in, fingers curled around the thumbs, just straight down and we'll start rotating at the wrists here. If you need a break from your squat, again, feel free to straighten the legs, that's fine. We're gonna inhale the arms up. And then when they get to the top, exhale the arms out wide and down. And then at the bottom, switch the direction of the rotation. Inhale the arms out wide and up. And then exhale the wrists straight down in front of you, very nice. And then from here, feel free to bounce just a little bit in your wide stance. 
We'll straighten the legs, toe heel the feet in a little bit. So now my feet are still fairly wide, like good two and a half feet apart. <laughs> I'm amusing my co-teacher. Maybe I'll give him a chance. You teach something. All right. Well, you brought the little hips, right? That was good. Do some chopping and blue. Ah, oh, okay. hips is great. I like that too. Well, let's roll some hips first. All right. So Probably hips. Feel free great. to step out pretty wide, and we're just gonna rotate at the hips. Sorry, I'm laughing at my own thoughts in my head. I'm thinking funny just things. Just amusing yourself. And it's cracking me up. Just amusing yeah. yourself while your co-teacher teaches away blissfully. Yeah, no, no, it's good. And then when you're ready, we're gonna switch the direction we're rotating in. It is good. Some people randomly laugh during a yoga class. It's very good. Mm -hmm. All right. And then let's come back to center. That's another thing to get into our <clears throat> body and out of our heads. We'll step the feet in about uh, hips width distance and they're both parallel. And we're just going to rock the pelvis forwards and back. So I'll it's like inside. back and then you bring it forward. And you can even, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can be like sticking out your butt and then sticking your butt under. You can also make it a abdominal exercise where you're uh, letting go of the lower abdominal muscles and then contracting them, pulling them back up to pull it in. So you can, you know, there's a couple of ways to think about this exercise. So just, but we're lubricating the joints, uh, especially the lower, the hips and the lower um, back at this point. And now start to get, a, see if you can get a small circular motion into this. So again, we're still, taking the hips forward and back, but we're doing it in a circular motion now. And then just in the interest of balance, balance <laughs> we're going to take it in the other direction. So we're doing everything in both directions. And then we're going to come back to center. We're gonna step out to about uh, mats width distance now with the feet a little wider. And now we'll do some figure eights with the hips. So it's we're taking one hip forward and back and then the other one comes forward and back. So we just, it's like we're drawing a figure eight with our hips. This is so good for um, hips. <laughs> And I can't help myself. Let's bring arms into this too. So feel free to add a backstroke to this as you bend into one knee, bend into one elbow and bring it back, bend into the other, bend into the other elbow and bring it back. So it's like you're, man, it's so fun to watch yourself practice yoga on Zoom because it's like I'm doing this very exotic and wonderful dance, possibly filtered out from the 1960s. Allow your spine to snake back and forth in this. Just feeling the fluidity of the movement. If this is painful in any way, feel free to just keep it to hips or just to arms. Either way, we'll find yourself back in the center. Shake it all off for a second. And then we're gonna do our figure eights in the other direction. So we'll start with the either hip back and then bring it forward. And then the other hip goes from back to front. So we're just changing the direction of that figure eight and do it a few times with the hips and then the accompanying arm movement that seems to make most sense when you're going in this particular direction is a more of a swimming forward motion so you can take the arms and swim them forward as well that might actually help guide the motion is this like a beach boy stance or something i don't know let's go surfing now everybody's landing now Something oh, like that. Uh, <laughs> Beach boys notwithstanding, Sorry. let's shake it all off again. Silly. Oh, silliness is so undesirable in this class. And let's just keep shaking and do our whole twist shake evolution thing that we often start class with because yeah. that is so wonderful. Warm in this room. It did get warm in this room. If you want, you could teach this one while I crack a window. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Or not. Oh. oh, so eventually we're gonna stop shaking and spinning and just kind of come just the just the twisting back and forth, trying to whack your partner, your bookshelf, your dog, or anything like that. Oh, don't whack your dog. And then we're gonna start to take our um, hands out. So you can take your palms down flat at about chest height, pull the elbows back. So it kind of looks like this, like you're skimming water at chest height. We'll add in a breathing exercise to this. Twist to the right and exhale with a and then twist to the left. Nice long spine here as we do this. It'll fall into your shoulders or hips. Continuing that breathing, turn the forearms up, face the palms at the head, making gold post arms. Continuing that breathing, we're going to take the arms out and down at about waist height, and we're manually spinning a hula hoop with our hands. And we're just going to slowly come back to center. So we can let the arms just kind of flop. <laughs> and then let's keep our feet pretty much where they are. Um, but let's widen them a, a hint and just turn the feet out to 45 degree angles so that when I bend into my knees, I can place my hands right on top of my knees, palm face down, inhaling long through the center here, and then I'll exhale, twist to one side. Just show you from the side, inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling. So we'll just get a nice little spinal twist action here, inhaling center, Exhale, twist. And then next time you come to center, we'll just hang out here, bring the feet so that they're parallel, they can see just as far apart as they were. We'll interlace the fingers in both hands, take the hands down below us, bending the knees, we'll inhale all the way up to standing, and then leaning back into the hips a little, exhale, folding forward, ha, like that. Inhaling up, exhaling, ha. And take this ha, ha, at your own pace. Ha, 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 ha. And then next time you're folding forward, just stay forward here for a second. You can walk the hands forward a little bit. You can walk the hands back a little bit. And then we'll bring the heels of the hands right to the hip crease. I'm gonna push down on my upper thighs here. So my heels and my hands are all the way up in my hip bones here. I'm gonna push down, inhaling the spine nice and long. Shoulders can come up by the ears, it's okay. Exhaling, folding forward. Ha. So we'll just do a few more of those spinal stretches. Inhaling up, exhaling, ha. Couple more. Ha-ha, last one. Ha-ha. And then we'll just toe heel the feet towards each other again, coming back into our traditional yoga forward fold. Dandasana. And then from here, we'll just kind of shake ourselves back up to standing again. And there's a couple more standing things I'd love to do. Let's take the arms out into a T. Feet are a little wider than hips width distance and we'll inhale to one side as if we're grabbing a giant beach ball and we're inhaling in through the side of the body. Exhale, arms come back into the T. Inhale the other side and exhale. Then continue at your own pace.
Your arms come back into the T here, and they can just come right down by your sides. Let's turn the palms face out, standing here in mountain pose for a second. I'll show from the side again. So what this means is my feet are just about hips width distance, maybe a little wider. I'm gonna stick my tail out to encourage an inward rotation of the legs. And then I'm gonna tuck my tail to encourage an outward rotation of the hips. So the hips are open here. From here, I'm gonna turn my palms face out to open up through the heart, but then I'm gonna take my hands up to my ribs and tuck them down ever so slightly. So I'm not pigeon chested, but there is an openness through here. Palms continue to stay face out, shoulders down, chin parallel to the ground. From here, this nice, strong, official mountain stance. Let's reach down with one hand and then reach down with the other. Just going back and forth like this. So it's not a hiking up of the shoulders, but a reaching down and a reaching down. And again, you can take this at your own pace. If you find that you like to reach down slowly and feel every little bit of that stretch, that's great. Or you can do it a little quicker and feel your organs <laughs> sliding past each other in your uh, abdominal cavity, because that's what this stretch is for, actually. It is an abdominal massage, even though it is very subtle. We'll get into maybe some less subtle abdominal massage in a minute. So from here, again, let's shake it all out. And because we aren't quite done with the Halloween season yet, we're gonna Frankenstein our way down to the ground. So standing on your mat, doesn't matter where, we'll take the arms out in front of us like we're about to attack someone and then take a peek at something on the wall or on the ground in front of you that's not moving. Come up onto your toes and then we'll just bend the knees using the hips and the arms as almost like a balancing set of weights to bring ourselves down to a toe stand here. At this point, you can either roll down onto, well, you can put your hands down and then roll back onto your hips. Or if you're still in your toe stand, you're feeling comfortable, you can bring your hands into prayer, pausing for just a second, balancing. And then we'll place our hands down and roll back onto our hips. And we're just gonna come right onto our back for a little abdominal stuff. Starting with ankle and knee uh, rotation. So to begin with, let's bring the legs to the sort of 90 degree angle. You can hold under the knees if you want, or you can just have the legs hanging out here in space, using your muscles to hold yourself up. You can draw the knees together for extra abdominal stuff, or just have them coming straight up from the hips. We'll rotate from the ankles here for just a second. And when you're ready, no hurry. We'll switch the direction of the rotation, drawing those little circles with your toes the other way. Breathing deep, hands can rest on the belly here if you like. And then we'll draw the knees in towards the chest and rock side to side for just a second. Massaging the low back, massaging the quadrants lumborum. If you have tight psoas muscles, this might feel particularly wonderful. And then we'll come back onto our backs, back to stillness. Legs in the same position. Again, if you want to hold under your knees here, that's fine. Or you can just have the legs hold themselves up. Knees can be more together for an abdominal toning exercise, less together for just the plain old rotation, which is just as good. We're gonna rotate the whole foot now. So we're rotating what appears to be from the knee, even though it's really technically from the hip. So first going in one direction, just drawing circles on the wall across from you with your entire foot, and then switching directions, going the other way. Hands again, can rest on the belly if you like. Feeling the belly rise and fall as you inhale and exhale. And then again, we'll draw the knees in towards the chest. And this time, let's put the palms of the hands right on top of the knees. And we're drawing little circles with the knees. So it's like I'm drawing circles with the knees on the ceiling. And for that reason, 
Okay, a nice little massage again through the low back. So we'll switch the direction, drawing those little circles the other way. And then last but not least, Yogi's Choice, you can either keep your head on the ground like this, or you can interlace the fingers in both hands and lift the head ever so slightly off the ground, really using the abdominal muscles more than anything else to hold the head up. But we'll have our hands here just for a little bit of stability. At this point, let's inhale the knees right into the chest, open them wide, and then exhale them down to meet. So we're drawing circles with our knees. If you want to follow the breathing, it's inhaling the knees up, exhaling the knees out. We're getting rotations through the hips here. And then when you're ready, we'll switch the direction. So this time bringing the knees down, out, and then up and in. Inhaling the knees down and out, exhaling them up and in. And then we'll draw the knees in all the way. You can bring your head back down, just bringing the knees in towards the chest as much as you can. And then let's bring the soles of the feet to the ground right uh, in front of the hip bones here. So knees are pointing right up towards the ceiling. Arms can come out into a T and we'll just gently let the knees rock side to side. Would you like to teach some um, abdominal exercises? Mm, yeah. Can we throw a few more in? Mm -hmm. So let's we'll do a couple of things for the abdominal muscles first. Um, we'll do some leg lifts. So we'll take the legs long, and I'm going to give you the choice. You can do alternating legs. You can do both legs at the same time. You can start start one way and graduate to the other way. Whatever you want to do, um, bringing the palms down. A face down alongside the hips, legs together. We're going to inhale one or both legs up and slowly exhale that leg or both legs down. And then on the next inhale, slowly bringing up the next leg or both legs again, exhaling down. And so we're just going to keep going back and forth. Either lifting both legs or alternating legs or whatever you feel like doing here. Inhaling as you lift, exhaling as you lower. This one's for the lower abdominal muscles. And the next time your legs come down, we're going to Bend the knees, bring the feet a little wide, let the knees knock in on each other. And we're just gonna lift off just slightly, like an inch or so off of the head and neck and reach down towards the right foot and then reach down towards the left foot. So we're just going side to side, reaching down towards the feet. So now we're working into the, um, the side abdominal muscles here. They're almost like little side crunches. And then we'll come back to the mat. Let's just bring our knees into the chest just to give ourselves a little relief. Feel free to rock the knees side to side or make circles. The other thing you can do is you can put your feet on the earth and just let the knees move side to side. Whatever you want to do here, just trying to release any tension in the lower back. And then we're gonna let the knees uh, come out wide, let the feet touch. We're gonna interlace the fingers, point the two pointer fingers forward, and we're gonna inhale, lifting up off of the 
uh, head and the upper back reaching down towards the feet and then exhale slowly lowering so we'll do that a few times inhale slowly reaching towards the feet exhale slowly lowering see if you can keep your leg your neck in line with your torso so you're not so you're the, the, all the crunching action is happening from the torso from the middle of the body and you're not uh, overcompensating that crunch by also crunching your neck forward as well. Maybe the last time you do it, we'll stay up for an extra breath. So inhaling up, exhale here, inhaling again. And then exhale, slowly lowering. And again, let's bring the knees into the chest, plug everything in, maybe do a little rock side to side. Uh, anything else, bicycles? Yeah, let's do bicycles. All right, we'll do some bicycling really quick while we're at it, while we're doing core stuff. So you can, again, interlace the fingers, bring the, your head into, uh, put your head into this little basket that you're making with your fingers. And then your choice, you can keep your head on the ground and you will have and just let your head totally relax. You can also bring the head up a little bit, but if you do, again, let the head relax into the hands. No tension in the neck, and then you can start to take the legs out and make a uh, bicycle as if you're uh, pedaling a bicycle. Laying on your back, pedaling a bicycle. And the slower you go and the further you uh, aim your legs away from you, the more challenging it becomes. But you know, feel free to do um, make it as challenging or not as challenging as, as you need to today. When you're ready, switch the direction. Try to pedal that bicycle backwards. It might feel a little different, a little strange, a little not quite like something you're used to. That's okay. And then let's let the feet come to the earth this time. Knees stay up. Take the arms out into T. Let the arm. Uh, let the knees. Um, just windshield wiper side to side, releasing any tension in the low back. All righty. And then at this point, you what? got anything else? I was going to say, we must be getting near the end, right? Are we near the end? I don't know. It's Already? Maybe not. Maybe not. Well, stay laying on your back while I check. Yes, we are near the end. Oh, all right. Oh, I've got some wonderful things for us at the end. So at this point, we have entered into our bodies, now we get to treat them nice. So feel free to bend both knees and bring the soles of the feet to the outside of the mat. Then we'll draw the knees in so they rest on each other. We'll just lay here for a second in knock knee pose. I want to take the pads of the fingers of my, both my hands to that little place where my ribs split. So right in the center, right below the sternum. This area is technically called the xiphoid process. Some people call it the solar plexus. Either way, we'll press in with the pads of the fingers right to that little soft spot in between the ribs. And we'll just draw little circles with the finger pads as we press in. If it's painful to press in, just let the fingers chafe over the body at this location. It's a very solar open heart area. Even though the heart is further up and to the left, we'll consider this like a heart massage a softening of the muscles that contract when we're about to be in a fight. Let's soften those, no need to fight right now. And then when you're ready, we'll switch the direction, doing those little circular massages the other way. Breathing deep, massaging just the top of the abdomen here. And then regardless of what direction you're going, Let's draw the little circles clockwise if our navel is at 12 o'clock and our chin is at six o'clock. So let's all go the same direction this time because we're gonna let that little clockwise circle start to move under the left ribs. So basically same thing, but you're just pressing underneath the left ribs here. I don't wanna say digging in, but you definitely wanna see what your capacity is. If anything is hard or painful, be tender with it, but be insistent. You might find that as you're massaging down below the ribs, some hard stuff gets dislodged, both physically and energetically perhaps. So now I've made my way all the way down to the outside of my left ribs. 
I'm on the left side of my body, just below the ribs, pressing in, doing little massages here on the oblique muscles at this point. And I'm gonna take my left hand into this sort of C shape, like a lobster claw, and just take it to the left side of my body. And as I gently press in with the right hand, palpating and seeing what's going on here, the left fingers, both of the thumb and the fingers, will be sort of gently squeezing and massaging that left side of the body. You can move the hand up towards the navel, taking care not to press on the navel. You can move the hand back towards the kidneys, taking care not to push too hard on the kidneys. And then let's bring the pads of the fingers close to each other again. And we'll go back to those little clockwise circles, this time massaging just above the left hip bone, the iliosacral crest of the left hip. So that's that knobby, pointy bone that should be located somewhere above your left leg. You'll probably find it pretty easily. And then continuing that little, well, those little clockwise circles making a much larger clockwise circle around their abdomen in case you haven't noticed yet. We will come right above the pubic bone. If you have to use the bathroom right now, this might be super uncomfortable, so feel free to not press very hard. If you don't have to use the bathroom, feel free to explore your psoas muscles because this is where they are. Just to the left and right of our pubic bone. Now we're right above the pubic bone. And feel free to cross over now to the right side of the body. So massaging those little clockwise circles. Now at the lower abdomen, just above the right hip bone, just above the right iliosacral crest. And work our way further to the right, coming above the iliosacral crest to the right oblique muscles, the muscles on the side of your abdomen. And here we are on the right side of our body, just below the right ribs. Let's continue to press in with the left fingers as we take the right hand into the C shape again and gently massage the right side of the body, just gently squeezing and pressing. This is where your liver is. So be gentle here. If it's tight or painful, just go slow, palpate the fingers. Act as if you're treating a sick pet, except that your pet is not sick, I hope. And then, We'll work our way, our fingers come back together and we'll work our little clockwise circles below the right ribs now. So we're at the bottom of the right ribs, possibly feeling along the floating ribs to the rest of them. And then working our way back up towards where we started. Ooh, as I do this, I feel my stomach telling me it's time for dinner. Ooh, I hear my stomach too, how exciting. And then at this point, Let's inhale deeply, feeling the belly rise. As you exhale, you'll feel the belly come back towards the spine. Let's draw the navel even closer to the spine and flick out our fingers along the bottom of our ribs. So I'm flicking out on both sides. I'll come up to the camera so that you can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna inhale deeply, belly expands, exhale. Belly comes back towards the ribs, and then I flick out this area just below the ribs here at the bottom of the exhale. Again, inhaling deeply when you're ready on your time, and then exhaling completely and flicking. Breathe in whenever you're ready, and then we'll just smooth the hands down the belly, smoothing off that wonderful abdominal massage that we just got out of. Now is a great time to grab your strap. If you have a strap or a belt or a tie or a rope or any kind of long thing that you can hold between both hands, with both knees bent, Let's bring the right foot to stand up on the ceiling here, and we'll take the strap around the ball of the right foot. Now you can either keep your left foot bent here like this with the sole of the foot on the ground and the left knee pointed towards the ceiling, or if your hips feel open enough and it feels comfortable, you can straighten out that left leg, possibly keeping the left hand on the iliosacral press, on the left hip bone as you do this. So we're just gonna draw, woo, hello. We're just gonna draw that right leg towards us. 
Maybe keeping a slight bend in the right knee if you're feeling this in your right hamstring, which means that your name is Ann Everton. You keep your knee bent. And then at this point, after drawing that right foot towards our face only so much, let's open the right foot out towards the right. If you have a block or some kind of similar prop nearby that you'd like to rest your right calf on, you're totally welcome to do so like this. That is one option. Breathing deep. Feeling the opening through the inside of the right leg, but possibly also feeling something on the outside of the left leg. That's normal too. If you like, you can flex both feet. And then we'll inhale that right leg back up to stand on the ceiling. I'm gonna move away from the wall here so I can show you what comes next. At this point, if you're using a block or a block-like object, you can move it to the left side of your body. And first, let's take both straps into your left hand. We'll bring our right hand either down by our, well, I'd say just straight up on our right shoulder. And we're gonna draw the left leg to the left, or the right leg to the left, just a little tiny bit. So keeping both hip bones connecting with the ground here. So it's a very slight. And then when you're ready, we'll take the, left, the right leg all the way over to the left, possibly resting the right calf on your block or if you're practicing right next to a wall like me, you can always rest the sole of the right foot on the wall next to you. At this point, feel free to look out over your right shoulder. So right leg is to the left, right hip is up, head is turned to the right. We've got a nice spinal twist here for just another minute. We'll inhale the right foot back up to stand on the ceiling. You might find that it's a little bit easier to draw it towards your face at this point. That's fine. Feel free to give that a try. And now I'll take a strap off and just gently let that right foot float its way back down to the ground, possibly feeling longer than your left leg. <laughs> your right leg might have grown an inch or two in this practice. So now we'll do the same thing on the other side. Yogi's choice, you can either start with both knees bent, both soles of the feet flat on the ground. We'll inhale the left leg up. And at this point, you can either keep your right knee bent or you can straighten out the right leg, bring both ends of the strap into your left hand and place the right hand on the right hip bone and make sure it stays down. We'll draw the left leg towards our face for a second here. Possibly bending the left knee if your hamstrings are tight, no matter what you do, no matter how many baths you take, you just cannot stop hiking. So at this point, with both of the ends of the strap in your left hand, let's take the left leg out towards the left. If you were using a block, you might find uh, serendipitously that the block is already right there under your left calf. So you can rest the left calf on the block if you like, or just rest the left calf in the air, feeling a nice stretch through the inside of the left leg and possibly through the outside of the right hip, depending on how close your hips may be after all that hiking. And then when you're ready, we'll inhale that left leg back up towards the ceiling. If you're using a block, feel free to move the block onto the right side of the body. We'll take both ends of the strap into the right hand now. We'll take the left hand straight out from the left shoulder. And then at this point, let's just take the left leg to the right a couple of inches, making sure to keep the right hips or the left and right hips both tracking down towards the ground just for a second to see what that feels like. A nice long stretch on the outside of the left leg. And then let's let that left hip come up as the left leg comes all the way over to the right, left calf possibly resting on the block or block-like object. And at this point, feel free to look over your left shoulder towards the left. Left leg is on the right, the head is looking to the left. Breathing deep. And then when you're ready, 
No hurry at all. We'll inhale that left leg back up to stand on the ceiling, taking the, well, first pulling it slightly closer to your face to see if that is an option. And then taking the strap off and gently letting the left leg float like a beautiful, colorful leaf down to the ground. Once both legs are on the ground, feel free to turn the toes in and out real quick, rotating from the hips here. So toes turn back and forth, side to side quickly. Then hands, which are resting on our side in Shavasana style position, you can turn them palm face up, palm face down, slightly quickly if you'd like, just rotating from the shoulders here, feet are turning, hands are turning, and then to complete the, the rotating of all the rotating things, feel free to gently turn your head left and right. Slowly side to side as palms and hands come up and down and toes point in. Making sure everything's flowing and you're running on all cylinders. At this point, if you have any other movements or physical practices you'd like to cultivate, feel free. Otherwise, if you like and you're wearing glasses, feel free to take them off. We'll bring again the pads of the fingers, maybe just the fat pads of the peace fingers this time, the pointer and middle finger. Let's bring them to this area right above the eyebrows in the forehead center. So it's, if I feel my forehead from the hairline down, I come to a bump and then a divot and then another ridge for my eyebrows. So that little divot right above the eyebrows will press in there right in the center and start rotating little circles right where your third eye would be. So just pressing in, pressing into those worry lines in between the eyebrows and just rotating gently. Maybe feeling the eyebrows moving, maybe feeling those worry lines moving, disappearing, smoothing out, widening. And then when you're ready, we'll switch direction, going the other way, same thing. Gently massaging the forehead. Take a deep breath. And at the end of your exhale, Let's slide the fingers out along the eyebrows. So you can do that a few times. Just sliding the fingers from forehead center out along the eyebrows. And then after a few of those, feel free to let the fingers rest at the outer edges of the eyebrows, at the outer edges of the eyes. There's that soft little area right on the side of the skull there. Feel free to press in slightly there and gently massage. This is right above where the jaw connects to the skull. And right next to the ears here, we'll just gently press in, first going in one direction, then going in the other direction. You can unhinge your jaw a little bit if you feel safe to do so, you aren't suffering from TMJ or anything like that. Feel free to take the jaw side to side as you do this. Further relaxing the face. And then let's take our whole palm and just slide it down the face. Both palms sliding down either side of the face, down the neck. And then as we lay here, a slide of the palms down the face, down the neck. Let's just flick out the top of our shoulders just a little bit. Possibly feeling chills as you do this because it is so wonderful to knock off all those burdens we've been carrying in our minds and our thoughts and just take a break from them for a minute. And then at this point, feel free to flick the fingers as if you're flicking all that concern just out the window, down a hill if there's a hill nearby you. 
into a river, into the ocean, to be deliciously eaten by all the spirits in the sea. We're done. So feel free to bring yourself into Shavasana here, hands outside of your hips, about a foot away from each hip bone, legs about a meter apart, three feet, maybe slightly wider than that distance. Letting the breathing become natural. Softening the edges of the eyes, the mouth, the heart, and the mind. When you're ready, if you're ready, and you don't have to be ready, feel free to bring some life to the fingers and toes, wiggling through both of them, both fingers and toes. You can stretch the arms long above the head, bringing the legs together, stretching long like a pencil. And then when you're ready, we'll roll off to one side or the other, resting in a fetal position for just a second. Breathing deep. Honoring your body, honoring your practice. And then when you're ready, we'll press down on one hand and the other, bringing yourself to a comfortable seat, taking time to sit up on a blanket if you like. And we can inhale the arms out wide and up for Prana Mudra, possibly leaning forward. Exhale, push back down, possibly leaning back. Inhale, arms out wide and up, leaning forward. Exhale, hands come down, leaning back. This last time, let's inhale the arms out wide and up, drawing the palms together. We'll exhale, palms down the heart center. If you wish to practice a short mantra with me, I am going to say Loka Samasta. Sukino Bhavantu. I'll pause between each part of that. What it translates to is may all beings be happy and free, and may I contribute in some way to their happiness and freedom. After I chant that three times, I'm going to chant Om. If you want to just join in for the Om, that's totally fine. And feel free to unmute yourself if you like. So when you're ready, feel free to join in or not. Loka Samasa Sukino Bandu Loka Samasa Sukino Bye. Uh -huh.
deep inhale for all. Ah. Delighting me, Alice. Delighting you. Thank you for practicing with us today. Namaste. Namaste. Yay! Thank you so much for joining us, Robin. What a wonderful treat to see you.